Thank you. The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 15094 in the name of Gordon MacDonald on Rotary Club of Curry Balerno recycling PCs. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Could I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Gordon MacDonald to open the debate. Mr MacDonald, please. Thank you, presiding officer. Uh, last November, I attended a Curry and Balerno Rotary Club event where I had the opportunity to discuss with members the club's work in the community. During the course of the evening, after hearing about the valuable work the group carries out locally, I heard from Lindsay Craig, the Rotary past, dis past District Governor, about the innovative work that this small Rotary Club based in my constituency of Edinburgh Pentlands was involved in 8,000 miles away in Malawi. At this point, presiding officer, I would like to take the opportunity to welcome the members of the Curry and Balerno Rotary Club who are in the gallery tonight to the Scottish Parliament. Rotary International, through the Rotary Club of Curry and Balerno, has collaborated with the Turing Trust based here in Edinburgh, run by the family of Alan Turing, wartime codebreaker and founder of modern computer science. The trust ensures, ensures that Alan Turing's name continues and its mission is to empower disadvantaged communities using information technology enabled learning. Since its establishment in 2009, the charity has been delivering ICT resources to selected primary and junior high schools in Ghana. They have also been working since 2015 to provide technology enabled education in schools in the northern region of Malawi. For the past six years, the trust supported by the Rotary Club have shipped over 4,200 second-hand PCs to schools in Ghana, Malawi, and other African countries. Every PC they put into a school in Africa has been wiped, repaired, and loaded with offline educational resources, with this work being done by a fantastic team of dedicated volunteers in Edinburgh. The project has been supported by the Scottish Government's Small Grants Programme, who awarded the Turing Trust 60,000 to support their work in bringing essential learning resources to rural communities across sub-Sahara Africa. Each PC that can be reused has a tremendous impact in the Malawian classrooms, and so far it has assisted over 41,000 students to gain vital digital literacy skills. In addition, over 450 teachers have gained skills in basic computer maintenance and are using computers to support their teaching. On top of this, there is also an environmental benefit. None of the ICT equipment ends up in landfill and is appropriately recycled at the end of the life, both here in Scotland and in Africa. By reusing old PCs, the Trust has had a tremendous environmental impact, offsetting to date 2,058 tonnes of CO2 emissions, which is equivalent of planting over 5,000 trees. However, not all communities in Malawi are connected to the electricity grid, and to provide computer facilities for those schools required an innovative solution. The Turing Trust design team comprised of four retiring professionals, Ian Campbell, Andrew Clark, Jim Douglas, and John Wilson, who are all members of the Curry Balerno Rotary Club, found a solution in the Solar Berry. The Solar Berry is a solar powered computer lab and classroom which uses low energy Raspberry Pi computers designed for off grid communities and housed in a repurposed shipping container. The prototype was delivered in April of last year to Choma, where a formal ceremony took place in June when it was officially handed over to the local community. It is designed for use by the whole community, not just the school, as it can be used for a whole range of activities from hosting movie nights to adult IT classes. The solar berry can also be used to generate income by selling its excess energy. It uses the energy it generates to recharge small electrical goods like phones and lamps at a fraction of the cost and environmental damage of petrol generators. This has had a huge impact on the day-to-day -day life of the community as members will no longer have to walk 10 miles to charge their phone. The solar berry journey starts back in Scotland 
where the shipping container is filled with computer equipment for distribution to schools in Malawi. Once empty, the shipping container is converted into a classroom with new windows cut into the sides to allow airflow to flow through the space and a shade cloth prevents direct sunlight from heating up the inside of the solar berry. Each unit is equipped with 11 Raspberry Pi computers and powered by solar panels on the roof of the container. The solar berry is having a huge impact in Choma, where it is allowing the local schools to offer computer studies and support their young people in gaining the digital skills needed for the 21st century. I congratulate everyone involved in this innovative project from both the Turing Trust and the Curry and Belerno Rotary Club in being able to deliver the teaching of digital skills to some of the most remotest and poorest communities in Africa. In order to continue this project, it's clear that they need more companies and organisations to donate their old computer equipment. Presiding officer, the Turing Trust is located in Simpson Lone on the old Royal Infirmary site, less than two miles from this parliament. Surely it would be better use of the computer equipment being disposed of from this place if it was donated to the Turing Trust to be wiped, repaired and loaded with offline educational resources for use in Africa than the current practice of sending it for destruction. This is an idea I intend to raise with the corporate body in the coming weeks. In closing, I wish to highlight one last point, funding. As I stated earlier, I'm delighted that the Turing Trust has been a recipient of the Scottish Government's Small Grants Programme. The charity has ambitions to get computers into every Malawian secondary school by 2025. But in order to achieve this goal, then more international development funding will be critical. Presiding officer, the reality is that for small Scottish charities, there are few opportunities to scale up in order to compete at the full development programme level. The Scottish Government has led the way through the Small Grants programme, inspiring many charities to scale up their ambitions and activities. However, however in order to continue that journey, to encourage small Scottish charities to grow, could there be a funding round for up to either 250,000 or 500,000 projects over three years that would help build Scottish expertise and develop our small charities to help them make the transition into fully fledged agents for international development. I hope the Minister will be happy to discuss this with myself and those involved in the near future. Uh, thank you, Mr. MacDonald. Uh, can I also welcome the members of the Curry uh, Balerna re uh, Recycle, well, of the, of the Rotary Club, also say gently, no applause in the public gallery, please. I know you feel like doing it, but it's not permitted. Uh, I now call Gordon MacDonald to be followed by uh, Gordon MacDonald. <laughs> I'll need to start putting sugar in my tea. Uh, I'll have Gordon Lindhurst to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Mr. Linter, sorry yes. about that. Um, th thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. May I begin my speech by thanking Gordon MacDonald for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. Um, uh, as a Lothian MSP, I'm delighted that the work of the Rotary Club of Curry and Balerno is being recognised in the Scottish Parliament in this way. Uh, indeed, I have myself previously paid tribute to the Rotary Club uh, and in particular an initiative regarding its community chess project in a motion I submitted last year. And the community chess project was something which the club did alongside the Lerno Village Trust. And the aim of that was to set aside funds to assist local clubs and organizations with small projects which benefit the local community. The Rotary Club assists a wide range of people and groups both young and old through an impressive array of different projects. A clear example of the footprint it leaves is its work with the Georgia Rotary Scholarship Program as detailed on its website. Three Rotary districts in the US state of Georgia sponsor up to 67 students from around the world each year to study at one of Georgia universities uh, for an academic year, a package worth around $30,000 per student. And my understanding is that between two and five pupils from the local area secure places on these programs each year through the Rotary Club in Curry and Balerno. 
But as Gordon MacDonald has pointed out, and his motion, motion points out, the Rotary Club doesn't just benefit the people of Curry and Balerno. Its international efforts have included raising substantial funds for the End Polio Now campaign and the Nepal earthquake appeal in 2015. So it is a club with global reach. And uh, Gordon MacDonald has set out the work that the club has done with computers. But why computers, Deputy Presiding Officer? Well, we live in a globalized world, and those who are cut off from it can often be left behind. And fundamental to tackling the issue of poverty in Africa is to equip as many people as possible with the technology and support to work in that global environment. <clears throat> and that includes equipping young people with the tools and skills to be able to learn and work in a world that is IT and technology driven in a way that our own young people in Scotland take this for granted. There's much to be done to help build that capacity for Africa so that people there can enjoy the same access that we uh, often take for granted. And computer access is of course essential to this and why it is so important, as is the generosity of those who donate their old computers to the club. So I would like to conclude by highlighting one of the quotes on the website from a volunteer working in Africa as part of the project. <coughs> it gives a flavor of the impact this work has on the people receiving the computers. And I quote, the emotions on the teachers and students' faces as we were setting up the computers is something I will treasure forever. Let me end my speech today, Deputy Presiding Officer, by saying a big thank you to all the Rotary Club members involved in this vitally important work. Thank you very much. I now call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Alison Johnson. Mr Stevenson, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And let me first draw attention to my register of interests as a member of the Institution of Engineering and Technology and a member of the Association uh, for Computing uh, Machinery. Um, it's a great delight to, to see the members of Curry and Valerno Rotary Club here. My own father became the president of Cooper Rotary Club in 1956, which is just a few uh, years ago. And one of my very early speeches uh, on computing was to Cooper Rotary Club in 1973. Uh, Rotary uh, is a very important part of our social infrastructure and does good work uh, right across Scotland and, of course, with international reach. Uh, so it's a delight to hear of a relatively small club doing something that without question is benefiting people who need our support in Africa. Old computers uh, are of course something that uh, I rather like, being as uh, I am the oldest person uh, looking around carefully uh, in the chamber, I think there is some value in things that have age. We can reuse them and rediscover uh, their merits. And the reality is that although computers are obsoleted by updates in the software environment and changing fashion, they can in fact continue to operate uh, for many years delivering useful service. So the benefit to the environment, the benefit uh, through reuse of old computers is of wider uh, benefit altogether. It's worth saying myself and two pals uh, built the first home computer in Scotland in 1975. That computer is still running. Happens to be up in Caithness with one of the, uh, the combine. Uh, the, the, the issue too, that it's worth going to. Uh, there was something in uh, what God MacDonald said about scaling up. Well, actually, in many ways, in innovation in particular, there is an intrinsic value in comparatively small teams. Innovation happens where communication between the members of a group is tight, is close. If you have a big group, it's much more difficult. And in Africa, we've actually seen where the opportunity has uh, been created to have access to technology, genuine innovation that shows the way uh, for people far beyond. In particular, Africa has been the place where electronic money has been developed using mobile phones to avoid people having to go to banks. They can exchange money between phones. Technology developed locally and showing us in the rest of the world that there is genuine ability to innovate if only we can give people the equipment with which to do it. The Raspberry Pi is a, a wonderful tiny little computer that you know you can get in the palm of your hand. Um, the American uh, 
moon landing program is, of course, the genesis of the integrated chip. There was only 0.4 of a watt available uh, for the 2K computer uh, that navigated the moon lander uh, down, and that acquired the integrated chip. Today, the integrated chip is something that is such that I now have four gigabytes of memory on my wrist, uh, whereas the first computer that I programmed in the 1960s had 1K of memory. The world moves on, but that should not mean that the uh, computers of the past are without value. And I very much welcome the Rotary Club of uh, Curry and Balerno showing the way in which we can reuse them. I hope in particular, too, uh, that we're seeing recycling of laptops. They seem to have a shorter fashion life cycle. And one of the important things about a laptop going out to areas where continuous access to electricity is limited is that, of course, they work when they're not connected to the mains. So I hope that uh, if laptops have not been part of the focus, uh, that they become part of the future focus. And I hope that this debate, as other ways in which uh, what's going on in Curry and Balerno and in Africa uh, becomes more widely known, the model is picked up and copied. And I hope there's no patents and no uh, copyrights on the design uh, of the solar berry because it sounds a rattling good idea that I'd certainly like to see uh, replicated elsewhere. And I certainly, the next time I meet Rotarians in the northeast of Scotland, will be drawing their attention to the example that this small Rotary Club has given us. Congratulations to them, and of course, to Gordon MacDonald for bringing this debate to Parliament today. Presiding officer. Thank you very much, Mr. Stevenson. And I now call Alison Johnson, be followed by Alexander Stewart. Mr. Stewart will be the last speaker in the open debate. Ms. Johnson, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too would like to congratulate Gordon MacDonald for securing this debate on the important work the Rotary Club of Curry Balerno and the Edinburgh based Turing Trust are doing to promote the recycling of PCs. And it's lovely to have you with us this evening. Um, I'd like to spend my short time fo focusing on what this work does to tackle the vexing problem of e-waste and also the educational benefit that it's clearly having. Electronic waste, as we know, is a major and growing problem. The UN Global E-Waste Monitor reports that every year the world produces around 44 million tonnes of e-waste. Now, that's the same weight as 4,500 Eiffel Towers. Um, but unfortunately, is predicting that this will increase. It will rise to 52 million tonnes by 2021. Only around 20% of this is reported to be recycled. And for many millions of tonnes of e-waste, we simply don't know what happens to it due to lack of monitoring. So e-waste from Europe and other developed countries is exported to emerging economies where it isn't always properly reused or recycled. And the European Environment Agency estimates between 250,000 tonnes and 1.3 million tonnes of used electrical products are shipped out of the EU every year to West Africa and Asia, and that a significant proportion isn't safely processed. And I think that's just one of the many reasons that the work of the Curry Balerno Rotary Club and the Turing Trust is so very important. The collecting, the cleaning and upgrading with educational software of over 4,000 computers is a huge task. What a fantastic achievement. Ross Coburn from Curry, the founder of the West Lothian-based Reusing IT charity, has donated over 400 PCs and monitors to the Rotary Club's campaign. And of course, as well as the positive environmental impact, evidence shows that the computers are having a really profound impact on the quality of education and of the life chances of the students who receive them. A survey conducted by the Turing Trust in Malawi found that the vast majority of students reported using the donated computers made learning easier and more enjoyable. And teachers too, they report an increase in academic performance with the pupils at the Ladoma Secondary School all passing their science exams. This is something that hadn't been seen before the arrival of the Turing Trust computers. A notable achievement. And both organizations are also doing their bit to ensure that the proper infrastructure exists to support computer learning. As, as Gordon MacDonald mentioned, 87% of Malawian schools don't have electricity. So the Turing Trust solar berry project, project is vital. You know, as Gordon said, with the help of four retired professionals, 
who are also members of Curry Balerno Rotary, the Trust has transformed a large cargo container by fitting solar panels on the roof and 13 low energy Raspberry Pi computers inside, allowing young people in the Choma community to access computers when otherwise it would simply have been impossible. And the wider community is clearly benefiting too. And Rotary members have also been raising money for solar powered electric lighting, so classes in the Choma community can continue in the evening. I think this really is a transformative model and one we should seek to learn from and to roll out wherever appropriate. I think there's much to learn for all of us from this fabulous example. To close, I warmly welcome the work of both Curry Balerno Rotary Club and the Turing Trust. I congratulate everyone involved in getting so many computers which might otherwise have gone to waste to those who need them most. I hope that the support the Scottish Government has provided through its small grant scheme will continue and perhaps grow. And I echo Gordon MacDonald's call that this Parliament should do all it can to provide support to the smaller Scots charities like these who clearly are making a profound and important difference to many lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call Alexander Stewart. Mr Stewart, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I am pleased to have the opportunity to participate this afternoon and would also like to congratulate Gordon MacDonald on bringing this member's business to the Chamber. And along with my other MSP colleagues uh, today, appreciate that the Rotary Club of Curry Balerno and the Turing Trust have done massive work already. The innovation uh, of recycling and providing used computers for schools in Africa over the last six years is nothing short of inspiring and shows the real value of Rotary International and how they can assist and support individuals and organisations across the globe. As a Rotarian myself, Deputy Presiding Officer, I am fully aware of uh, the roles uh, that happen within uh, a club, and I've been uh, fortunate enough to have a number of roles uh, in my time uh, as Vice President, President uh, and International Development uh, within my own club of the Rotary Club of Perth St John's. So I've experienced firsthand uh, the sheer determination, uh, the commitment, the enthusiasm and the hard work that Rotarians put into the role uh, and, and they see that as supporting not local but national and international projects. Uh, Rotarians go that extra mile to support individuals to ensure that they can and do make changes to people's lives and this project is doing that uh, without question. As much of the work already has been seen, uh, individuals are relatively unseen and sometimes unsung about what they will do. Uh, so it's very important that we have this opportunity this evening uh, to have uh, members of the club here and others who are supporting uh, in the gallery to hear uh, uh, their, their congratulations and their commendations for what they're actually trying to achieve. And in addition, Deputy Presiding Officer, as the co-convener of the Cross-Party Group on Malawi, uh, I have been a long-time supporter of Scotland-Malawi Partnership, and I've seen uh, the, the Turing Trust and the excellent work they're doing in, with reference to education in Malawi, but not just in Malawi, across the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. And indeed, the, the PhD student, James Turing himself, honoured his great uncle, the computer scientist. We've heard that, uh, who was heavily involved in the Bletchley Park uh, code-breaking Alan Turing uh, at finding uh, and supporting this. Uh, and, and following his first trip to Ghana in 2009, James noticed how difficult it was for schools to acquire affordable, reusable computers. And I think that this project has has galvanised that support and shows uh, what can be achieved. Uh, and I pay tribute to the staff and the volunteers of the Edinburgh Charity who, who have ensured that these computers can be refurbished and replaced and have gone to Africa. And I know that the, the, the Malawi Partnership and the Centre for Youth Development in Mazuzu in 2015 benefited massively uh, from their, their involvement. And after years of uh, computers uh, that, that we've already heard about the solar berry uh, to trying to ensure that they have the electricity to help that. And that's been designed uh, uh, and the solar berry itself is off the grid computer uh, and that is there to ensure that the Raspberry Pi computers uh, are workable and being used. So, so that has supported about 250 students and around 1,000 adults in uh, the Community Day uh, Secondary School, which is in rural Malawi. Uh, and I also pay tribute to the Turing Trust for supporting hundreds of schools across Malawi. Malawi, Liberia and Ghana themselves, where 4,000 computers have already been installed. So as a result of the commitment of this Rotarian and the Rotarians uh, within this club, alongside the Turing Trust, around 25,000 students in Africa are now IT literate, plus 450 teachers are now trained in basic computer maintenance skills. And that, Deputy Presiding Officer, is to be condemned. Uh, uh, con 
commended and applauded. Uh, and I wish to, to, to say to the Rotarians that, you know, for what they are doing, their small part uh, that they are playing as having a change of life for individuals who would not have that opportunity. And I think that encompasses the whole Rotarian attitude that by doing something uh, for others, uh, you, can, you can ensure uh, that that takes place. So I pay tribute uh, to the success that they've done uh, for the time and the talent that they have. Uh, and I commend and congratulate them for all the work they're doing and well done. Thank you. Now, thank you very much. I now call on Ben McPherson to close to the government. Minister, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, thank you also uh, very much to Gordon MacDonald for securing this debate and bringing the work of the Rotary Club of Curry Balerno uh, and a warm welcome to you all and the Turing Trust uh, as a whole to the attention of this Parliament as we, we start this year. Also, thank you to Gordon MacDonald and others for highlighting the Scottish Government's International Small Grants Programme. As has been said, the Scottish Government was pleased to provide funding to the Turing Trust under the Small Grants Programme for their improving ICT skills in rural Malawi powered by Renewable Energy Project. I know that uh, there has been reference this evening to the work of the Trust in Ghana and Liberia. The Scottish Government support was uh, specifically for our, our partner country, Malawi. This project, which began in, in 2016, has enabled the Turing Trust to create a customised e-library to complement the provision of community ICT hubs in 200 rural schools in Malawi. And I understand that this project is progressing well and will be completed later this year. I've been impressed to hear uh, the incredible work the Rotary Club of Curry and Balerno and the Turing Trust have been doing together, uh, delivering with the Scottish Government support, and in particular the approach that these organisations have adopted. The power and importance of partnership working should not be underestimated and is at the heart of the Scottish Government's international development strategy. And I know from my own constituency of Edinburgh Northern Leith, uh, and the Rotary Club there is also at the heart of, of what the Rotary movement seeks to, to do and achieve and the difference that it makes. The Turing Trust is just one example of an organisation receiving funding through the Scottish Government's Small Grants Programme. The Small Gr Grants Programme was established in 2013 to help grow the international development sector here in Scotland and to support it in helping some of the world's most vulnerable communities in our partner countries of the time and of today. And what we've heard today is, is symbolic of the difference that's been made and is being made. With £500,000, half a million made available annually, this programme, the Small Grants Programme, is an integral part of our International Development Fund. We are now beginning to see some smaller, younger organisations in Scotland, like, for example, First Aid Africa, successfully bidding for and being awarded grants under our larger programmes. And in, in uh, First Aid Africa's case, this is in, in Zambia. And this is testament to the success of the small grant programme in developing small organisations and increasing capacity within the Scottish international development sector. The latest small grants funding round closed in November 2018, just, just a few months ago. And applications are currently being assessed uh, and will be and applicants will be notified of the outcome of their applications in the coming months. And I'm very much looking forward to receiving recommendations for our independent assessors. As I said, the Small Grants Programme is, is a, an important part of our international development strategy, as has been uh, exemplified by, the, by this debate and the difference that's, that's been made by the Rotary Club and the, the Turing Trust. I've had feedback on, on that programme from the International Development Alliance here in Scotland and uh, I'm always welcome to, to receive feedback on how that is operating and, and on that point we would uh, be happy to meet with, with Gordon MacDonald in, in the way that he requested in, in his opening remarks. Technology, as has been highlighted by other speakers, is, is a hugely important aspect to international development and how, how we take things forward. Technology has the capacity to make major life-changing differences to many of the world's most vulnerable people and communities. And making technology available to the most vulnerable, for example, computers or mobile phones, can assist in improving the ability to 
hold governments to account, to increase economic opportunity, em empowerment and productivity, to encourage learning, and even save lives through the provision of health care and health information. And many of the projects funded from the Scottish Government's International Development Fund use old and new technologies to assist some of the most vulnerable people in communities, to lift themselves out of poverty and to build better futures for themselves and their children. For example, in 2012, we funded an innovative project through One Billion, which helped over 30,000 Malawian pupils to learn maths through the medium of Chichewa using interactive apps on iPads. Under the 2015 to 18 Malawi Development Fund, the Scottish Government provided funding to the Voluntary Service Overseas Organisation in partnership with One Billion for their Unlocking Talent Through Technology project. And this project built on the 2012 grant by equipping classrooms in the Kanjuzgu district with mobile tablet technology to enhance instruction and allow for highly tailored and interactive learning. Unlocking Talent is now a nationwide educational initiative across Malawi, partly built through the progress that that project made. The initiative is now institutionalized in the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology's Digital Education Technology Agenda, with a goal to embed it in all 5,300 primary schools, covering roughly 4.4 million children across the country. This highlights, building on the example of, 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 of the motion today and the subject of today, the power and importance of partnership working, supporting small organizations and harnessing technology to reduce poverty. And there are other examples across Malawi that I could uh, highlight. For example, in the past year, the Scottish Government has funded uh, the Scotland-Malawi Partnership that was mentioned uh, to use some of their funding uh, and their ID, IT equipment in their Lalongwe Communications and Resources Centre to provide computer and training skills to 115 girls and young women from, from five schools. So uh, this and the example of today's debate are, 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 are important examples of how technology can be used to drive social change and empower those in our partner countries and elsewhere in the developing world to, to make a bigger difference. Presiding officer, in closing, let me focus again and take a moment to thank the Rotary Club of Curry and Balerno and the Turing Trust for the important work that they do in recycling, refurbishing and shipping computers to developing countries. They have been innovative in their approach uh, to recycling computers and other technology and their partnership working has been exemplary and in, in increasing literary skills in Malawi. And, and that focus on increasing digital literary skills has made an important and meaningful difference. This work is very much appreciated by all in the chamber, as has been said today, and more widely, and by the Scottish Government. Uh, we are happy to have supported this project through the small grant scheme and uh, recognize and celebrate the collective contribution that, that, that has been made together towards greater global citizenship and making a bigger difference. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.